What is up, ladies and gentlemen? I hope you're having a wonderful week. I had a couple of viewers asking me questions about trading. If you don't know who I am, I am Dean. I'm the CEO of Stealth Capital. We're one of the top performing companies in our space. And in this video, they were mainly asking a question of trading psychology. They had a very particular question about how to think about things if they have a personal bias towards the asset class. It's a bit nuanced, but I want to take a broader approach towards trading psychology in general. If you don't have your trading psychology on point, it doesn't matter if you have the best source of alpha, if you're the best signals, if you're the best analysis, etc. You won't be able to pull the trigger at the right time, at the right moment, and you'll probably do the opposite of what you should be doing, which is the natural emotional response for most new traders. Once again, none of this is financial advice. This is purely my personal experience. I am sharing this for educational purposes only. So let's get into it. If you are new to trading, or if you have a little bit of trading experience, you will understand that human emotions are doing the exact opposite of what will make you money in the markets. When you see an asset class running up, the natural human reaction is to feel severe FOMO. Your neighbor, your cousin, somebody calls you, hey, I made 10 times my money on this Dogecoin or some nonsense, right? Your natural inclination is thinking, that guy's not any smarter than I am. I want to make money too. And he just bought a car with whatever he made. Maybe I can do it too. You hear enough of these stories and the FOMO makes it so that the price keeps running up, running up, running up. At the point when you no longer can resist the FOMO is right about the time when the market starts dipping because everybody else is thinking the same way you are. And then when the exhaustion of buy pressure is at its highest point, that is when you will top tick and buy at the top, and then things start falling. On the other end, as things start falling, everybody gets really scared and like, oh my God, this thing's worth nothing. Let's get out, get out, get out. Every single fiber of your being, if you're untrained, is going to be, we need to get out now. We need to save what money we have. We already lost 50% of our investment. We need to cut as much as we can and get out. Cutting losses is definitely a very important part of trading and portfolio management, but cutting it for the wrong reasons is not correct. I want to explain what a professional trader and portfolio manager does to manage their own trading psychology. And this applies broadly as well. It's not just for trading and investing. This is also applies for relationships, etc. You have to understand that your emotions will sabotage your ability to make logical and good decisions. If you are somebody who reacts very quickly to stimuli and have not developed some type of mindfulness or meditation practice, that is the first step. You have to be able to create a gap between the stimulus and your response. And the stimulus, usually you see a large movement in the markets going up, going down, some good news, bad news that is meant to shock you, right? All of the media sources and outlets that you see today are meant to get a reaction out of you so that you spend more attention, more time, more money purchasing their products or just getting more advertising dollars for them. Understanding that that's the game and adopting a low information diet on purpose along with a meditation practice are the first two cornerstones to developing a healthy trader or investor mindset. After you've done those things and you have started a journaling practice, understanding why you feel the things that you feel, what it is that triggered it and how you can change your response in future scenarios so that you can get better. Just to recap, we've mentioned meditation, adopting a low information diet, and then also journaling. So those are the prerequisites. What do those prerequisites after you've done them on a daily basis provide you as the trader or investor? It offers you a clear mind that allows you to not have the need to make money. Because I would argue that the need or the desperate desire to make money, especially quick money, is what makes most traders lose money. You see this in dating as well, right? If you are somebody who is very desperate to have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a husband or wife, that neediness sometimes directly works against your ability to secure somebody that might actually have been attracted to you in the first place, but because of your neediness, you turn them off. In trading, it's very similar because when you have a desperate desire or a need to make money in markets, it clouds your judgment. You are no longer looking at things analytically and logically. You are looking at it from a very emotional standpoint, which causes you to over exaggerate when times are really good and then also think things are worse than they are when things are really bad. And that causes people to want to sell when markets are bad and then buy when markets are good, which causes you to lose money in market cycles. So developing from the first three habits that we mentioned, a mindset where you don't need to make money or in the dating landscape, you don't need to have a date. When you adopt that mindset, and I had somebody tell me that it's more of like a retired trader's mindset, I don't need to make money, but if there's an opportunity that is extremely good in the marketplace, 
the risk reward is amazing the fundamentals line up all the indicators line up i will take that trade but i will take that trade with very very well planned out risk parameters and profit taking targets and so when you have those scenarios which don't come along every day right so you're not trading in and out of the markets every single day you take them right but you take them without the need to make money that's why a lot of young people who ask me hey i want to be a day trader i want to be this if you don't have a source of income outside of just trading the probability of you being a consistently profitable trader go down significantly because you have this desperate need to sustain your income. And that desperate need to sustain income is something that will work against your trading psychology and cloud your judgment. If you have some type of income already, whether you're working a job, whether you have rental income, whether you have other streams of income, that allows you to adopt this retired trader mindset that I was talking about, where you don't need to take any shots on goal. And if an opportunity arises that is so good that you can't not take it, then you increase the odds very significantly of you making consistently profitable trades. In summary, if anybody is interested in becoming a better version of themselves in terms of trading and investing, as well as other aspects of life, the first three things that they should be doing is number one, adopting a meditation routine every day, non-negotiable. Number two, journaling. Number three, adopting a low information diet. Those three things will help generate an equanimity and a clear mindset and clear thought process that allows you to approach the markets in an abundant mindset where you don't need to make money. Adopting that type of mindset, you can see things objectively for what they are. Whether it's a bull market thesis, bear market thesis, it allows you to make objective judgments with clear risk reward targets and risk parameters that allow you to increase the likelihood of you becoming a consistently profitable trader. So that's it for me. I hope everybody's having a wonderful week. If you enjoy content like this, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe below and we will continue making valuable pieces of information that hopefully will push you to become the best versions of you and help make the world a slightly better place. So that's it. We'll see you on the next one.